Welcome back to another episode of Rock Boys Football. A lot of buzz surrounding Lincoln Riley, this USC program coming out of the recruiting trail. And USC is putting together a phenomenal class in 2025. There's certainly no arguing that. But what really is standing out to me is Lincoln Riley doing a massive job prioritizing the lines of scrimmage. And you got to give Lincoln Riley so much credit. You're looking at one of the more successful head coaches We've seen this last half decade, and he's looking at this program, looking at how he is running this program and making some significant changes. And you see a lot of coaches that have won a lot of football games at the collegiate level kind of fail to make those changes. I think Kirk Ferentz at Iowa certainly is one example. Dabo Sweeney at Clemson, another. I think Lincoln Riley could very well easily just keep doing what he's doing within this USC program because he's won so much during the last half a decade but he's making changes. And I think those changes are imperative for this USC program heading into the Big Ten in 2024. You take a look at USC and what they have already in this 2025 cycle, two out of their top three commitments are line of scrimmage players in Justice Terry and Isaiah Gibson. You look at USC in the 2023 cycle, a phenomenal recruiting class. Nobody's certainly arguing that, but you take a look at the positions they prioritized. Zachariah Branch, Deuce Robinson, Makai Lemon, all very good players for USC, but they prioritized the offensive skill. And this is certainly not me getting up here and telling Lincoln Riley to stop bringing an elite talent at the quarterback wide receiver position. It's the positions that they've had this most success with over the last couple of years, even going back to Oklahoma. But he had to make some changes. I think that became very apparent. He makes significant changes to the defensive coaching staff. And you're seeing him make significant changes with this USC program from a personnel standpoint as well. Got to give credit where it's due. Lincoln Riley making some big time changes. I want to talk about a few more targets for USC along the lines of scrimmage that it kind of sounds like they are the leaders in the clubhouse with some of these recruitments. Before we get into it, as always, just want to say, Thank you to you guys, the USC fans. Y'all know I love talking this program and the amount of support you guys have shown the fellas in the middle of the summer talking recruiting. That stuff means the absolute world. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys more than you know. And without further ado, let's get into this one. And I want to start with the offensive side of the football and a guy in Nick Brooks, who in my mind, buzzing some of the film over the weekend, one of the more intriguing offensive line prospects in this 2025 cycle. And the reason that I didn't talk about Nick Brooks prior to his official visit to USC, I didn't think USC had a chance in this recruitment. You look at Nick Brooks was trending to Iowa for a long time in this process, takes an official visit to Georgia, starts trending to Georgia. I knew he was taking an official visit to USC. I had a hard time seeing USC kind of take that momentum from Georgia And it sounds like they certainly did. And you look at Nick Brooks, a guy that is made to play for this Georgia offensive line. These are the kind of bodies that Kirby Smart goes after on the high school recruiting trail and kind of gets the best out of Saturdays in the fall. USC getting in this recruitment and seemingly and kind of sounding like they might have the upper hand in this recruitment, I think is a massive storyline for USC. You talk about Big Ten caliber offensive linemen. In my mind, you're looking at one with 6'7", 350-pound Nick Brooks, who, one, just so physically imposing on the film. And you kind of see that he stands out from a body type standpoint. But what really stands out to me is the athleticism that he has for that size. And I'm not saying he's a premier athlete, but he doesn't really need to be. When you have the length and the size that Nick Brooks has, it's certainly athletic enough to make it happen at the Power 5 level. You talk about Elijah Page, Nick Brooks, those are – You know, the kind of bodies that USC needs on the offensive line to have success in the Big Ten. You're seeing them do that on the recruiting trail. Nick Brooks, suddenly a guy to keep an eye on for this USC program. Next one I want to talk about, and the the USC fans who've been rocking with the fellas the last couple weeks and months know this is my guy. It's Floyd Bucard. Uh, Quickly, a background story on him. Many of the USC fans probably have already heard this. Former hockey player from Canada. Goes down to Alabama his junior year, plays football. I mean, at a certain point, you're like, hey, 6'3", 315, buddy, you have to be on the football field. Plays his junior year in Alabama, low-level high school ball, 
27 tackles for a loss, 11 sacks. He's transferring to Miami Central for a senior year. That is some big-time high school football. I fully expect Floyd Bucard to have a massive senior season and this process as a four-star prospect. If USC can get in on him early, it sounds like USC is certainly the leader in the clubhouse for Floyd Bucard, who's scheduled to commit on July 20th. That commitment might happen sooner rather than later. I'm a massive fan of this kid. You take a look at the film and say 6'3", 315. He is an explosive athlete for that size. And I think what stands out about Floyd Bucard is he can do the dirty work. At 6'3", 315, plays with low pads, can eat up double teams, let his linebackers come downhill, but he also can be a guy that gives you those difference-making plays, tackles for loss, gives you some juice in the pass rush. Those kind of bodies are really hard to find. I think Floyd Bucard is certainly going to be one of them. And again, you talk about Big Ten defensive linemen. Floyd Bucard's one of those guys. Another guy, very, very similar conversation to have is Malik Autry. Another guy that I didn't necessarily talk about that much because he was committed to, or still is committed to Auburn, but kind of had a hard time seeing USC get in on this recruitment. You fast forward to Tuesday afternoon. Certainly sounds like USC's in on this one as well. Very similar conversation from Floyd Bucard. This is a little bit more of a bigger frame at 6'5 and a half, 320. Carries the weight exceptionally well. Phenomenal athlete for the size. And again, you want to start betting on these guys that are the big frames, that are the phenomenal athletes for the size. Malik Autry, Floyd Bucard, certainly those two guys. And I think a few other names to kind of just keep monitoring if you're USC. And I, I think what stands out is, I mean, three years ago, USC is not in it for five-star defensive linemen from the state of Alabama. USC doesn't have two five-star defensive linemen from the state of Georgia already committed in 2025. You're seeing a significant change in Lincoln Riley's approach to the recruiting trail. We have Justice Terry, Isaiah Gibson. Let's talk about Elijah Griffin, also a five-star defensive lineman from the state of Georgia. I mean, it truly is unheard of for USC or a program from the West Coast to go into the state of Georgia grab premier defensive lineman, that is seemingly what USC has been doing. And Elijah Griffin could be a very similar story to a guy like Justice Terry, who was committed to Georgia, takes a visit to USC, commits on the spot. I'm not saying that USC is going to land Elijah Griffin, but you get him on campus later this month, we'll kind of see where the momentum goes. We saw Coach Henderson do it with Justice Terry. I think we have a very good shot at potentially seeing him do it with Elijah Griffin as well. You dive into Elijah Griffin, there's a reason he's a top 10 national prospect. 97 tackles, 31 tackles for loss, 17 and a half sacks as a junior in high school. You start looking at the physical traits, carries 285 exceptionally well, has a 80-inch wingspan, 10-inch hands. I kind of say this with a few guys. Elijah Griffin's one of them. You build a defensive lineman in a laboratory it's kind of spitting out a guy like Elijah Griffin, another difference maker for USC that, again, we don't normally see USC get in on, on the recruitment trail. You're seeing USC do that. Another guy that I think is really intriguing, I think USC certainly in it for this one, is Trajan Odom from the state of North Carolina. Another guy that Ohio State's in on him, Michigan's in on him, a plethora of SEC schools in on him as well. 6'4", 285, difference maker on the defensive line, can play the nose, can play the three-tech, versatile, can move around the defensive line. I think what stands out to me is I'm not saying USC is going to land every single player that we just talked about, but the mere fact that USC is in it for every single player that we just talked about, I think it really resembles the change in mentality that Lincoln Riley's having from a personnel standpoint. He think he looked back at this USC team the last two years and say, hey, where did we fall short? Mostly along the lines of scrimmage, physicality along the line of scrimmage. How do you fix that? You got to get the personnel in there. And I think you're seeing Lincoln Riley have a strong emphasis on doing just that. Hopefully some commitments come over the next couple of days. If they do come, you guys know we'll be breaking them down. Got the commitment sweatshirt right by here. So it's 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 quick quick walk to the commitment sweatshirt. Appreciate you guys rocking with the fellas again. If y'all do enjoy the content, consider subscribing to the channel. Appreciate you guys, and we'll talk to y'all later.